Hi guys, it's Becky and I'm about to kick off my first make for February with a project that is going to make it possible for me to start off my February challenge with a bang. And if you haven't seen my other video where it's a really short video, four minutes where I'm explaining what I'm doing for the month of February, I really enjoy challenging myself. And I have decided that I want to do a full set of jewelry with at least one full set of jewelry with each of the bead boxes and bead um, bundles that I purchase or receive this month. So for the month of February or that I'm working with. So this is the February curated bead box and it is pure passion with all of these luscious reds and pinks and silvers and blacks. And it is something that I had already had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do with it to make a necklace and a matching bracelet. So all I need to add to that is a ring and some earrings for a full set of jewelry. Um, now, if you're joining along with me and you're going to be doing this challenge, your full set may be different from mine. You may not include a ring in your full set. I'm going to include a ring in my full set because I don't make enough of these rings. I have a ring mandrel and like it's sat, sat on my shelf for like six months um, between the last time that I made one and now. And so I just made one and somebody suggested that we do that and I said that is a fantastic idea. So that's why I'm challenging myself for the month of February to do that. So I'm going to be making a necklace. I'm going to be making a bracelet. I'm going to make it, be making some earrings and I'm going to be making a ring. And I'm going to be using beads and findings from the curated bead box. I'm going to be using some 18 gauge wire. This is craft wire in silver for doing some of my wire wrapping. I have grabbed some of the findings that came in the finding starter kit for this. Like I've got some head pins and ear wires for the earrings. I was thinking about doing maybe a memory wire bracelet, but I just decided I'm not doing that. I'm going to do a wire wrapped chain bracelet to go with my idea for the necklace. Um, but I do have some closures that I can include on that. And I believe I am also going to do something with these eyeglass holders because I'm just going to add one extra thing to this set, but we're, we're going to start this off with a bang. Um, because I'm going to be doing some wire working, I'm grabbing my go-to wire working tools of flush cutter, chain nose pliers, six step bell making pliers, and round nose pliers. And I'm going to be using those. In addition, when I get around to using the ring, I am going to be using my ring mandrel for sizing and shaping. If you don't have a ring mandrel, you can still make rings. If you take a ring that you already know fits you and you look around for something and to see if it will fit on something cylindrical, see if it'll fit there and just try out a whole bunch of things until you find something that fits perfectly and then you can shape on this. But I will recommend that you not do any wire, um, wire hardening while it's on something that is not a ring mandrel, something that's not meant for that. Um, because you can do a little bit of work hardening while it's on the mandrel by using like a nylon tipped hammer to, you know, get that nice round shape and also to work harden it so it doesn't deform when you put some pressure on it. But if it's um, like plastic that is breakable, you might break that. If it's glass, it will definitely break it. So if you're going to do work hardening, get a mandrel. If you're not work hardening and it's not a necessary step, it just makes it so that it doesn't deform later. You can do it that, that way. You can do it with uh, whatever you've got lying around. All right. So that's what we're going to be starting with. That's what we're going to be working with. And let's go ahead and start planning out the necklace. I grabbed these 8-0 seed beads that came in the bead box. They are going to be some spacers and part of the design. 
they are clear with that red lining. Is it 8 or 6 O's? I think. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, no, those are 6 O's. All right, so yeah, those are 6 O seed beads. And then I grabbed these three cube black beads that came in the box. All of these metal rose links. I'm going to be using all of those in my designs today. And the rose heart that came in there. I've got these silver drizzle beads and these marble style semi-opaque with the red, red drizzle kind of beads that we've got there. And those are going to be most of the beads that we're working with for the necklace. Um, for the bracelet, I'm going to be pulling out these black obsidian beads and adding that to the mix. But for right here, and now this is what we're going to be using on this. And I'm just going to pull aside two of these and two of these to use in the earrings in a bit so that they're ready to go and out of the way. And I'm going to be using one of these for the bracelet. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to move these out of the way. And I am thinking about making a Y-shaped necklace. Using these rose connectors. These black beads and these red beads. So I'm going to need to make some links to connect all of these together. And then I'm going to have some other links. for the rest of the necklace to go up around the rest of the way. All right, so I think that's what my links are going to look like. I have some 18 gauge soft flex craftware. 18 gauge works just fine for these. And I'm just warming it up with my fingers before I start. If you need to straighten it out, you can do so with some nylon gel pliers. And I'll just make it a little bit easier for working with. Um, but I like to work off the spool when I am doing my simple loop links. And that's what I'm going to be using for these since I am using 18 gauge wire. It can usually hold its shape a lot better than... Um, like 22 gauge. If it was 22 gauge, I would be doing a wrapped loop. So I'm going to start with this on here and I'm going to show you the reason why I put my beads on before I start making my loops in just a minute. And with simple loops, I like to use my round nose pliers because I can slide up and down and adjust as I'm going. So for a simple loop, I'm going to grab about the middle of my pliers just twist around until my wire meets the other side and makes kind of a P shape. And then while it's at a P shape like that, I want to center my loop. So I'm going to put my round nose pliers back in that loop. And while it's open, swing down to just below. So my other side just hits it right below that. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a twist so that it bends back in that direction. And this is a little bit bendy. So I'm just gonna straighten it out and also work hard in that loop a little bit by tamping it gently with my chain nose pliers. And then I'm going to scooch my beads right up here. And this is why I like to do it 
from the spool is to minimize wastage. I estimate from the bottom of this bead to about two and a half fingers, sometimes two fingers, sometimes three. Two fingers should be enough for me to be able to cut that off here. And then I can start forming my second loop on my link. And to do that, I'm just gonna bend this wire right there next to the bead, because it's a simple loop. And then I've learned how to measure from the side of my finger. If my finger is right up against the bead, right up against where that bend is, the length of my finger up until about right there where my fingernail starts, that is enough room for me to get a good sized loop with my round nose pliers. So I cut off a little bit of excess and then I'm going to start right there in the middle about the same place that I started my loop the other way. And if I don't have enough room for that loop, this is why I like those the round nose pliers, I can scooch back down the barrel and get myself a loop that closes. I want these loops to be parallel. Right now they're kind of a little skew whiffy. That's a real word. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of my pliers and I am just going to twist until my pliers are parallel, like that. And I'm going to take my link here and I am going to connect these by swinging open you want to swing it to the side, not open and out. Swing this up like towards you if you're looking at it to put your next loop on. Connect it together. Give that a little tamp. And then on the other side, swing this open. Put this guy on. And there we have, I have my first part of this Y-shaped necklace put together. So let me show you kind of a little bit how I do some of my, um, like when I'm doing multiple links all at the same time, I'll just go ahead and string like all the beads that I'm gonna be using for those links on, let them drop and hang out next to the spool. This is my quick and dirty way of getting this done. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did, but it's gonna be a little bit faster because I won't be explaining what I'm doing the whole time. So I've got my loop, straighten it out. Put this guy up here, measure my wire. And I'll do this kind of like, um, what's, what's the word? You know, I'll do each of these steps like multiple times for multiple of these. And then I'll do the next step for all of those multiples. So they all get done. Assembly line, that's it do this assembly line style. That's mostly so that I don't have to spend a lot of time picking up my tools and putting them down again. See, I can just leave this in my hand and pick up each of these links and do it like that. Measure the side of my finger And measure the side of my finger. See, I don't have to put that tool down. I can do both of these at the same time. And now I can drop that tool and pick up this one and do both of those at the same time. It's just one of the ways that uh, 
I have figured out how to make it a little bit easier on myself so that I can make multiple links at the same time with all these tools. And doing multiple links at the same time is one of the ways that when I got these tools, I tried it out. Um, I spent some time doing multiple beaded chains because there were repetitive motions. There was going through and doing this over and over again several times, and I wanted to see if I had any fatigue from doing those motions using these tools, and I was really happy that I did not, that they were very comfortable, and that's why I'm happy to recommend this brand, Casual Comfort. Um, they're from the Beadsmith, and I know I'm not the only YouTuber to recommend them, but I will absolutely recommend because I can do all of these repetitive motions again and again to make these jewelry and I don't have fatigue at the end of it, which is important to me. All right, so now I'm gonna do some connecting. Perfect. Now this is the part that I want to make sure I've got it pointed the right way at so that all of my roses are facing forward when you're wearing it. Since they do have a front and a back. So let's see. Perfect. And this one I want to also be careful of. Okay, so that one I need to come front to back, I think. Yes, front to back on there. Whoop. Keep setting these down and then picking them up and they do make a little bit of a noise. All right, so there we go. That is the first part of that necklace. Like I said, it's going to be a Y shape. So now I've got to do some additional beads up along the side. And for that, the length that I want to do is one of these drizzle beads, a seed bead, the marble style bead, a seed bead, and one of these drizzle beads. So these are going to be kind of longer links. That's fine because it just gives me more room. And I'm going to put on enough of these beads to make, I think, six links. And then I'm going to see how long that gets my necklace. because I'm going to be doing a fairly short necklace. It's not gonna be a real long necklace. Actually, maybe I'll do three of them and see how long one side is. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. So that's one, two, three links strung. And again, I can do this by making multiple links all at the same time.
I need to tell you guys a story about Ellen. If you are new to my channel, Ellen is one of my dogs. She's a rescue dog. I call myself her emotional support human because she needs me like all the time. She is a pit bull who is just extremely sweet and whiny and always needs constant validation and that's okay because that's what i'm here for i'm here to validate her but we had something happen today that hasn't happened since i bought this house and that was that i had a low battery alarm on my um smoke detector and all of these are they're all networked together so when one of the smoke detectors like goes off, it uh, alarms all of them. And there's a voice that comes out. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to bend this back to center my loop. So let's correct that now. It's not too late to do that before you make your second loop. It's a little bit on the wonky side. Look at it twisted up like that, but I can straighten that with a little tamp of my pliers. It's not that bad. Anyway, so we had this loud noise and a beep and it was terrifying to Ellen. And this is a dog that like, yes, she needs a lot of love and affection and attention, but she will sleep through fireworks. She has no problem with loud noises usually. She's like, okay, whatever. I'm happy, it's fine. And she'll just, be a happy little dog sitting there sleeping through fireworks and I've never had any problems with that. She was literally like shaking because of the loud beep and the voice coming out of the ceiling telling me that I had a low battery. And like it kept doing it. And I was searching through my junk drawer looking for my batteries and they actually were in the hall closet. Um, and trying to get my stepladder because I am five four and a half, and my ceilings are very, very, very high up there. So I need a ladder ladder if I'm going to get up to there. And while I was getting all that, my brother came out and he was like, ah, can I help you? Which was awesome because that meant I didn't have to get up on the ladder. But it also meant that like Ellen was like, ah, I'm freaking out about everything. So I let her out in the backyard because like, you know, it's a safe space. She can be out there. Um, she has only escaped the backyard once, and that was because my brother forgot her out there, and she chewed through the bottom boards of the gate, went on a small adventure in the neighborhood, and then turned around and came back to our house and pawed at the front door to be let in. So she's not an escape artist. She knows where the food lives. She knows where I live. She is happy to come home. Every time she comes home, she's like, okay, this is where I live. This is my house. Um, it doesn't matter where we live. If it's our house and we've lived there, she's like, this is where I live. Because um, we've moved, uh, I think, once once since I got her. And, uh, and both times, she's come right back to where she lives. And she's like, okay, I'm here. Where's the food? I want to lay down in my bed. <laughs> That's just, that's who she is as a dog. Anyway, she had a scare and I have never seen her that terrified before. Um, not even when we went to the gym and they had a punching dummy that she was like, oh no, I got to fight that guy. She, she wasn't as scared of that um, boxing dummy as she was of the loud lady's voice coming out of the ceiling. Which, I mean, fair. It is terrifying when you're not expecting it. And, you know, if you don't speak English, because she doesn't speak English, and you don't know what they're talking about, it can be very, very upsetting. So I understand. But she is sleeping that off right now. Because she wouldn't come back in the house after I let her outside. I was like, okay, it's all over. You can come back in. And she was like, no, I am not going back in that terrifying place where like that loud buzzing 
noise and lady's voice was, it's just not going to happen. I'm going to walk around here. I'm going to eat some of the good grass. I'm going to smell all of the clovers. And I am just going to do that this whole time. And here we go. And you know what? I actually think I would like to pop a jump ring in between these links to give it more movement. So I'm going to, like these are fine, I think, but for the rest of this, I'm gonna pop some jump, jump rings in there. So let me grab some of those. I know I just put this together, but I am changing my mind. You should always feel free to change your mind when things aren't working for you. rings and these are just five millimeter jump rings that I'm grabbing um yeah I know there are jump rings that came in the thing but I'm gonna save those for something else entirely and I'm just flattening these out because sometimes like the jump rings um like they'll be a little offset I don't know if you can see where that that split is so I am just taking the time to make sure that that is not offset before I put that loop on there. There we go. That's going to be a better jump ring for that. And... So that's right there. Oop. You know what? I'm going to have to close that anyway. Close that jump ring. So I may as well. Put these apart. Close it up again. Like I, uh, simple loops are great because they make for easy construction of your Thing, and you can open and close them and add them to just about anything without having to get jump rings out. But I want a little more articulation and movement between the different segments. I don't want them to be all choked up like they were looking right there with the way that they were linked together. And that's an aesthetic thing and the way that you feel like the chain is moving or not moving. Um, if they were shorter links, I probably wouldn't have as much it's choking up feeling between them. But since they are longer links, I definitely think these jump rings are going to make this chain wear better and be linked together better and not be awkward. And weird. Alright. All I'm doing with the jump rings is I'm holding the jump ring in one set of pliers and swinging it open like that. And putting in one loop and another loop. And then you hold that end in that plier and you swing it closed. All right, I'm gonna check the length on this one side and I think I need one more. And that will be long enough for, I like a shorter necklace so one more on this side and then we'll do the other side and I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and make my links and I'll come back after I've got these put together and we'll attach a clasp. Alright guys, so I have made all of my remaining links and I went ahead and connected them using the jump rings exactly the same way I did before with the others. So all I'm going to do now is attach my clasp. I'm using just the lobster clasp from the bead box. 
and one of the jump rings from the bead box for the other side. I could leave it without the jump ring so that the clasp just holds on to this, but I'm just going to add that because I feel like doing it. And I'm going to attach both of those with the jump rings that I pulled from my stash. I could use the jump rings that came with the box too for that, but I'm just trying to be consistent with what I'm using. Could also attach it directly to it but I like having that jump ring there for the extra articulation especially with the clasp all right I also took the liberty of making a few extra links of the same link I made two for the bracelet that I'm gonna make in a minute and I made two for the eyeglasses um, uh, chain that I'm going to be making as well to go with this for my five piece full set. So that is the first piece done. I left that out there. That is the first piece done and it is roses and hearts with some black beads. So I'm going to set this aside so it doesn't distract the camera. Let's figure out our bracelets. So I wanted to use this as my main focal for a bracelet. And then I made a couple of these links so that it uh, ties it together with the other. And I wanted to grab some of these um, onyx gemstone beads. These are pretty large beads, but I thought that they would be great in our bracelet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of links with these on the other side of that kind of as an echo to these square ones again so they go together the same but different so I'm just gonna make a couple links there and then we'll put it together because it's just gonna be putting the links together and adding a clasp for this then we can move on to the other parts of this set after we do this bracelet the bracelet will be very easy to do especially since I already made these two links when I was making the others and we've just got this as our focal I'm just making two additional links Using the same method that I made those other links with my simple loops and my 18 gauge wire This is so far just what I have left for my overages, um, my waist ones, just because I overestimate that, so I have something to cut off. Um, I could probably cut it closer and have zero wastage. But that might be a little too much effort for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not sure I want to go through that much effort. All right. 
And these again are fairly long links. So after I get them connected with the jump rings, and the jump rings will give it more articulation, I'm going to check and see if I need to, after I get these on here, um, bend my links, the, the wire in there, to give them a bit of a curve. Probably won't need to do that, but if I do, I like to wait and see what the bracelet looks like when it's together before I make those curves. Wow, why am I terrible at opening up this jump ring? There we go. All the way in. Sometimes I have to readjust how I'm holding my jump ring because my um, pliers will get in the way if I'm holding it too close to the opening. My pliers will get in the way and make it hard for me to slide things on there. So I have to readjust that. But holding it close to the opening is the best way to get a good clean closure on it. All right. I'm going to have to try this on, see how it sits, and that'll tell me whether or not I need to bend my links to give it some curve, which is not an odd thing to do when you have longer links on your bracelets. There's just a problem with that jump ring. Let's do this one. So much easier. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one with lobster claw and a little jump ring. And if I need to, I can make a little extender chain with some of these jump rings, but I don't think I'm going to need to. I think this is going to be the perfect length for a bracelet for my wrist, which is a seven and a half inch wrist. We'll find out though because the jump rings do add a little bit of length. That's not closed all the way. Those are at a little bit of an angle. There we go. Much better. Okay, I am going to need to make a bit of a curve on this, and I'm just going to do that by holding both of these ends here, kind of pressing on this bead right down here and just giving it a little bit of a curve. Oh, hold on, was that the right curve? Yes. There you go. I'm gonna do it on this side too. There we go. There we go. And 
and these as well. I want to make sure it's turned the right way for that. Okay. Giving it just a little bit of a curve. And this one here. There we go. That's just going to help the bracelet fit better on my wrist. So let's get this over here on the other side. Whoop! Where are you going? See, that's the main reason to do an extender chain is because... Uh, I like being able to hold on to it while I'm doing my thing. It will, it will fit though. If I can add an extender in a little bit or, ooh, you know what, this will work. I'm just going to stick this in here. And that just holds my little link, my loop, while I'm putting this on. So that is item number two done. I took the liberty of doing one earring while we were doing that. I thought a simple earring with just a small stack to mimic the links that we're already using would be a good plan for this. So I'm taking a head pin and I'm putting on one of the 60 seed beads and then stacking the silver drizzle bead, another seed bead, and the marble style bead. And then we've got another seed bead to cap this all off. And all I'm going to do is another simple loop at the top of this little stack of beads. And we will, after I get my loop made, attach an ear wire to that. I'm going to grab my thing right there. Grab those pliers to make my loop. And those are simple earrings, but they are going to be effective sometimes, especially if you've got fancy other things. A little simple something is all you really need. All right, and speaking of a little simple somethings, I did make a couple of links to go on an eyeglasses chain. So I've got the eyeglass loops here. And I'm going to go ahead and just stick one on the end of each of these links because these are going to be right next to your face, right there next to the eyeglasses. So that's what you're going to look, look at when you're, you've got it right there. It's the little decoration. And the thing about, um, I think the eyeglass chains is weight does matter with what you put on your chains and what you decorate it with. I would not use any of the really, really big beads on that because that's just going to be more weight on your eyeglasses, pressing down on your nose and on your ears when you're doing that. So something lighter weight is going to work better for you. 
So I went and grabbed some of this chain out of my stash. I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see the chain a little bit better. It has these little swirly things that kind of are reminiscent of like the roses, just a little bit. They look like they've got little rosettes in there. So I thought thematically it would go pretty well with this. So there's no clasp. It's just gonna be the solid length of chain on both ends of this. Because you don't need a clasp for this. glasses chain and oh, this last link is a little bit broken and misformed so I'm going to remove it from this end there we go then I'm going to loop this end of my link into that chain So like that's the thing is when you're doing a set is you sometimes just want to make sure you've got like a cohesive theme, same links for all the different pieces and have that go through there. So let's put this on my eyeglasses. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, pretty. There we go, and when I'm wearing them, again, I'll just be a little bit of decoration right there next to my face. And the chain will go behind so that when I take them off, I can fold that up and they can just kind of hang there and not get lost. <laughs> so I've got my eyeglass chain and my earrings. I've got almost all of my set done. Ah, this is really fun actually. I am so glad that I decided to go ahead and go through with this and do this this whole thing because I am I am having some fun. All right, I'm just going to set these guys aside and we are going to grab some wire and my ring mandrel, and we're gonna make a ring to go with it. And I think what I want to do is a rose ring. And I did um, a trial ring already, like this, just to make sure I knew what I was doing. And I think it looks great. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did with this on camera with y'all. So for this, I'm gonna pull off about 20 inches of wire, 18 to 20. Before I actually pull that off, I'm just going to straighten this a little bit. Get this going. You can use um, nylon gel pliers. I've got some nylon gel pliers. I'm just not sure where they are. But I'm going to just round. Okay. There we go. So I've got this right here. I'm going to find sort of the middle of it by bending it sort of in a U shape, but I don't want a big harsh bend yet because I want to put a bead right in the center of my rose and I'm gonna grab one of these seed beads. I'm gonna put this right here in the center of my rose. So if I can somehow find the end and put that right there at the bottom, that's where that's going to be. I'm going to find my spot on my mandrel um, that is the size that I want. And if you are not using a mandrel for this, you'd want to use the thing that this will fit on and form it around that. So that's, that's, that's what we're doing if we're not doing mandrels. All right, so mandrel. I'm going to cross this in the back, both of these wires. 
and bring it all the way around like this and all the way around like that until they are crossing right next to our guy here. I'm actually going to shift my bead so that it's not in the channel. So I don't want it in the channel for this. I'm going to take my pliers and right here next to this bead I'm going to take one of my lengths of wire with my pliers. These are my uh, chain nose pliers. If I can grasp it in the right place, I'm going to give it a bend up this way. So it's going straight along the mandrel. I'm going to pinch that into place right next to there and on the other side I'm going to take this length and I'm going to bend it so it's going down so I've got one that's going up and one that's going down right here next to this bead because so we are going to just kind of frame that bead with our wires there we go and I'm pushing these together with my fingers so that this will stay the right size. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with this bottom wire while I'm pinching this. I'm just going to wrap it around the outside of that one so it's coming up. I'm going to take this other one and wrap it around the outside of that one. So it is, this one's pointing up. This one's pointing to the side, like that. And then I'm going to chase them around. So if this one's up, I'm going to bring this around and under, right there, like that. And if this one's pointing up, this one's going to point to the side. I'm going to take this one, and it's going to go around and under. And if this one's pointing to the side, then this one that I'm moving is going to point down. Doesn't have to be straight. Can definitely be curvy. And then this one, I'm going to bring it around and it's going to go under this one. You can lift it up if you want to, to make it easier. It's going to come around and this one's pointing down. So I'm going to bring it from here all the way to pointing on that side. There we go. So far, so good. It's a very tiny rose so far. You can take this off of here if you want. Doesn't matter, you can keep it there or not. I'm gonna, this one's pointing to this side, so I'm going to move this from here up to here so it's pointing towards the top and when it comes around it's going to go under this wire like that then this one's going to come around and this wire is pointing up so this wire is going to be pointing to that side after it goes under Let's see we're making ourselves a little rose it's pointing to the side so this one's going to go under and point downwards there we go this one's pointing down so this one's going to go under and point over to the other side Oof. again chasing go slow think just a couple more passes will be good enough for our ring. That one's going to the side, so this one's coming to go from pointing down to pointing up. Like that. And the 
this one's going to come around here, go under. Oof. Okay. And here we go. This one, very last, I'm going to have it go under. And instead of pointing straight down, I'm going to keep it going all the way around under the whole thing so that I have some wire going this way and some wire going that way. And now I'm going to take it off because I am going to wrap the ends of this around the sides of my ring. Now if you're using a ring mandrel, you can go back on here and readjust this to make it rounder. I just lost my bead. There we go. Let's put that back where it's supposed to go. Right in here. Oof, there we go. Scooch that back up a little ways. Yeah, you can make it rounder. Um, that just actually stretched out my ring a little much, but I'm going to bring this around here and then take my flush cutters, cut off all but just maybe a half a centimeter there. Let's like a eighth of an inch, but now I can bend it around here and I am going to go back and fix this so it is more rounder and less folly party. but I'm going to do that after I get this bent around and this end tucked up under here and out of the way. Like that. And I'm going to take this end, I'm going to bend it down around this, do the same thing. Again, this is 18 gauge wire, so it is a little less malleable than other gauges. All right. I don't think I cut that short enough. I'm going to trim it a little bit closer in here. I'm going to push this end between these so that we don't have any sharp ends rubbing against the skin. All right, so now to make this more ring-like and more rounded, I'm gonna put this back on my mandrel. And the part that is on the opposite side, I'm gonna put this down here and I'm gonna use my nylon pliers, or not my nylon pliers, my nylon hammer to give this a few taps to help work harden it and to help it kind of not really straighten out, round it out a little bit better. And I'm going to shift this over here and do the same thing for this side. Shift it out and do the same thing for this side because this side I think needs it the most. That's 
better. So now I have a little rose ring to go with my rose bracelet, to go with my eyeglass chain, to go with my rose necklace, to go with my earrings. Where did my earrings go? There they are. All right, full chain February is off to a great start. Day one, <laughs> you know what? And if this is the only full set that I make, or full set, not a, did I say full set or full chain? If this is the only set I make, I'm still very proud of myself, but I'll probably do more if I'm real honest. And this was the curated bead box. It is a monthly subscription box. It is one of the most economical boxes out there. And I'll put a link to it if you are not a subscriber and you would like to subscribe. I will put a link to where I got my ring mandrel and my hammer. Um, I'll put a link to my mats that I like to use. And uh, these casual comfort tools that I have been using. And also where I got my craft wire from. I think that's everything. If I forgot something and you want to know where I got it from because you want it to, let me know. And I'll put a link in the comments. But I hope you guys are having a great day. And I hope you are ready for a fantastic weekend. And I am going to have some beautiful jewelry to wear tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.